Hi, record button. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jo from Avalon by Nature, and today I have with me Bernadette Popich. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, thank you, Jo. Thank you. This was very, very impromptu. It was, it is wasn't very it? impromptu. Well, as I was saying on my message, I uh, was doing a, a just a short live video this morning. It's Tuesday morning, and well, it was Tuesday morning, and um, one of my lovely customers um, was on there this morning, and she said, oh, can we have an interview with Bernadette? I went, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just learning to strike while the iron's hot, and you picked it up, so like, here we are. <laughs> yep. Well, I said today because otherwise I have too much time to think about it and stage fright gets in, right? Yeah, this is it. my first interview or a little cup of chat. Oh, yeah. cool. Welcome. Well, yeah. I hope you've made it a good cuppa. I've got my cuppa. <laughs> I haven't actually got water. water. It's too hot. So cheers. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. A nice afternoon and chat. Absolutely. So, um, so we've, um, we've done some work together last month as probably anyone yes, who's watching have. this knows. And I guess yeah. that was a bit of a, a bit of a baptism because it was the first time we'd done any work together. Really. Um, we'd been to a few fairs where we've been nearby or like across the room. Hi, Bernadette. <laughs> Hi, Hi Jo. And then your head's <laughs> down and I never see you again until back up. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, in yeah. fact, that's why you didn't know that you'd met me back in 2016 at Nowra. <laughs> <laughs> that long, gosh. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, in fact, true. not only that, I mean, in your defence, um, Jan and I were upstairs on the mezzanine and you were down on the ground floor. So, like, unless you'd had time okay, to do a I'll, really I'll take good... that excuse. <laughs> I will take that. I will own it. All right? That's it. See? <laughs> I'm looking after you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, I love you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. You too. <laughs> um, so I guess um, I suppose this may well be a first conversation we have really had time to have because we're usually just, you know, yeah. hey, how are you going? See you later. <laughs> and, you have a good day. Yeah. Awesome. Catch you next time. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And even when you came and did the workshops and um, and readings, um, we were we were flat chat on those days when you came in at Swansea as well. So um, yeah, yep. that was really that was really good. But I noticed that um, a couple of people who came in to have readings with you have been watching your lives since. Oh, that's awesome. So that's really nice. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Um, Olivia, who um, was on this morning and um, asked for me to get in touch with you to have, in, have a chat, um, has yeah. just found your page as well. So she's she's going to start watching now as well. Oh, uh, awesome. So, you know, that's, that's cool. lovely. That's cool. That's what, for me, that's what Avalon is about, is about sharing that yeah. and um, being a community where we get inspired by lots of different people and create that kind of network based on what we're interested in and... And, you know, I try and sort of meet lots of different people from all different walks of life um, to kind of feed that in and out, you know? Yeah. 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 So, but you know what? It was such a pleasure working there. And thank you for inviting me as oh, well, because it was such a great time, right? Cool. It really, that's really cool. was. And meeting new people and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it was a beautiful platform to be able to become, come in and work. And it was a lovely environment, Good. right? That's so when, when you work, you know, you have that nice environment. You just think, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> just sort of yeah. settle in and, and do the gig. You know, I really, um, right. it's important to me to make that process as smooth as possible for both the person, the practitioner, you, and um, yeah. the, the wonderful person who's booked to come in to either buy yeah. something or purchase, you know, have a reading, sorry, or to participate in a workshop. And so, um, yeah. you know, it, it's good. It was good. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. I did. And you definitely did a well, uh, it was a job well done. <laughs> right. So. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> be three years before I do that again, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the famous last word. That's not going to happen. You know that. <laughs> I know. I know. I know what I'm doing next. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess what we don't get time to find out is uh, where have you come from, Bernie? Um, you know, what what has brought you it to this point where, and I guess 
perhaps you could introduce us to what you actually do. Um, I'm, I'm making an assumption that everyone watching will know. So let's let's undo yeah. that assumption and and um, tell me tell me about about you. Tell me about you, Benedict. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, Go. so I was born in Wodonga, right? Um, uh, just on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. So yep. it was a very very little country town. And um, I think it only had a population of just around about 400 when I was born in 1961, wow. right? So, yeah, so I suppose my journey started when I was probably around about three and a half, four years old. I was able to see spirits and mm. talk mm. to spirits. Mm. But it was um, nobody else could around me, like my mm. family and that sort of thing. So it was sort of difficult because... It was like, shh, don't say anything. People will think you're crazy. And I went, oh, but she's right there. Hello, can't you see her? <laughs> you wow. Know. Yeah. Anyhow, right. And her name was Emily May, that, the little girl that used to play with me, oh. right? And we used to play tea parties, oh. go and play in the mud. Oh. And whenever we had to catch the bus to go into shopping, you know, I said, hang on a minute, I've got to go get Emily May. And she said, you can't say that, right? People wow. think you're nuts, right? So anyhow, I learnt at a very young age that not everyone could see and that progressed, right, through school. You know, Bernie being Bernie gets verbal diarrhoea and I'll often say things mm. or, you know, and it might have been a prediction or something like with my first grade teacher. I um, it was the last day of school term and I was heading out the door and my teacher said she was the only lay teacher in a convent school. Oh, I know wow. there were three of them, but there was all the others were nuns, right? And um, I was about to run out the door and my teacher says, okay, Bernie, have a nice holiday. You too. I hope you feel better. And she says, I'm not sick. I said, no, after the accident. Oh. And she said, haven't had an accident. Okay. All right. See ya. Bye. See <laughs> you next time. Oops. Oopsie. Oh, no. Yeah. It was a big oopsie, right? Because when I came back to school after the holidays, my teacher was on crutches. Oh. Right? Bernadette. Right? You said something about an accident. I went, oh, yeah, are you better? You're okay? You know, what does a six year old do? Yeah, right? that's right. Oh, no. That's right. Right? Anyhow, so I, I then, life became a little bit difficult with the nuns because she obviously told the nuns and then it was a little bit of um, oh, being pulled up to the front of the class and being told, you know, introduced to the class, this is the devil's child. <gasps> so that ha happened for quite a few years until it sort of, I suppose, it didn't become an issue anymore, right? But I, mm. you know, because, you know, it was such a small town, word got around and then I would be, I became scared of saying anything mm. because I didn't know where it was coming from, mm. whether I heard it from someone or whether it was, you know, just me and my, you know, yeah. little yeah. voices in my head because I get all my messages through my right ear. Mm. And so I didn't talk very much between the age of eight and 14. Mm. Apart from saying, hello, how are mm. you? How's the family? Right. And that was about it. But we moved to Sydney when I was 10. Again, still went to a Catholic school. A lot, majority was run by nuns. Right. And so I didn't sort of speak very much. I didn't say anything and just kept on. I started putting filter, right? I asked myself questions. Where did I hear it? Mm -hmm. Was it told by someone? Mm -hmm. Or am I just yeah. hearing the voice in my head, yeah. right? And yeah. so it had to go through, like through three gates mm -hmm. before I would actually verbalise anything. Would that mean that right? you would actually take a bit of time answering questions because you'd be doing that yes, filtering? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. And I still do it to this day. I don't answer 
straight away. Sometimes I wait and I just pause. Then I think, I don't have to pause anymore, right? Ah. <laughs> Especially if it's a client sitting across from me, right? Yeah. But Because um, <clears throat> they're so, there yeah, to so, hear the voices in your head. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'd get locked up for that. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it is like, you know, I, I finished school at year 10 and then I did TAFE and did a bit of a secretarial and started working in a hospital um, as a ward clerk. So, um, yeah, I spent 30, 36 years working in the hospital system. Wow. And, um, yeah, that was interesting because, you know, I still saw spirits and I yeah, still you'd be heard surrounded them. by and them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, especially in my um, 30s because I worked at Nepean and I worked in emergency over there and it really escalated, mm-hmm. right? Everything just started escalating, whereas, you know, before they were sort of kind to me and they'd only appear one at a time right or something like that and then all of a sudden it's like the floodgates opened right and it was like thousands and to the point that I'd be walking down the street the main street of Penrith and um, I wouldn't be able to tell I couldn't define whether it was a spirit or whether it was an actual human Mm -hmm. right and so sometimes I would just close my eyes and please 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 be a spirit, please be a spirit, right? So Mm. that I could walk straight through. Mm. And um, sometimes I would bump into, I would literally bump into a person, Mm. right? And then I'd have to quickly say, I'm so sorry. I was just, you know, off in my own little world. (laughs) Off with the fairies, right? (laughs) Sometimes people were nice and sometimes people were (laughs) nice, right? (laughs) And I can't blame them because I'd be closing my eyes like, please. Oh, no. Um, Yep. So that was very, very, very overwhelming. Mm. And it was a real struggle because in the early 80s, there really weren't that many new age shops or people that really came out and said what they did. Yeah. Right? And so there really wasn't that much help. So I, um, I, in my desperation, went to, uh, not to my local church because I thought the priest will know me, right? Mm-hmm. So I went to a different one and asked him for an exorcism. <laughs> because I thought I had, I had thousands of voices in my head. Oh, wow. All nattering at the same time. So I literally went um, into a, uh, a church and the priest was happened to be just there and lighting some candles. He says, can I help you? And I said, I'm going crazy. I said, I need an exorcism. And he says, why do you think you need an exorcism? And I said, oh, well, because um, I've got thousands of voices. I hear things. I know things. I, you know, I see things. And he said, all right, let's start with one. So we sat on a pew and he said, so what do you know? And I said, Father, you've been a very bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Bernie gets verbal diarrhea and I was at panic stations, right? <laughs> so and your filters were not working. <laughs> absolutely none. <laughs> they were burned out. <laughs> they were absolutely burned out. Oh, um, gosh. And so what did he I say? Know, he said, you're a very bad boy. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you've got a family. Right. And he said, how do you know that? And I said, your mum's telling me. He said, but my mum is. And I said, yeah, I know. Your mum died in 1978 Mm -hmm. in August. And her name is Margaret. Right. And he said, okay, I assume you know things. He said, that's all right. He said, I don't think you need an exorcism. He (laughs) said, just some people know these sort of things. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) But he spent a lot of time with me. And, um, you know, I'll be forever grateful because he helped to put things into perspective. Right. So he told right. you you weren't mad. He told me I wasn't mad and right. I wasn't crazy, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was another lady, Sally, that I actually came across a new age shop and she actually helped me a lot as well because I just said to them, I said, take it away. I don't want it. Take it mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And mm. unfortunately, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> right? right. So I ended up, um, she sort of mentored me for about six months and helped me build tools. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. And it was, that's important. You know, yeah. whatever we go through, whatever we struggle with, especially with, you know, in the readings that I do and the healings I do, to me, it, you know, they have to go hand in hand. Mm. You know, yes, you can make predictions. Yes, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But if you carry a luggage full of fear and anxiety, depression, lack of self-worth, and you're carrying that baggage with you, how are you going to move forward? Mm. Right. Yeah. So to me, the readings I do, it's about helping people to debunk what they're carrying, the past mm -hmm. and what control it has. Of. Because we always say, this always happens to me. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the universe presents another plug. Here mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you can stop that thought process, yeah. if you can right, shift out of that, use them as lessons, right, to help you move forward, then you can, you've got the tools. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know, then, share the tools from the experiences that you've had? Absolutely. Like yep. all the posts that I write? Yes. They are from a personal experience. Yes. Because otherwise, you know, to me, it's not something I've read in a book or, or you know, um, experienced at third hand or fourth hand or yeah. anything like that. It's about what I've gone through because I grew up in a time that there wasn't support. There wasn't this massive, you know, um, new age movement, whereas everyone is stepping into it and it's, it's okay. It's accepted worldwide, mm. right? I grew mm. up in a time in the sixties where it wasn't, mm. So I had these struggles and so every single struggle I had to, I had to find a tool to help me overcome it. Right. Yeah. And to keep my sanity. And yeah. so that's how the posts came about. Right. Is because I'm thinking, well, if this had worked for me, well then if I share it, maybe it'll work for somebody else. Yeah. And so that's why I share the things and I talk about things or, yeah. you know, do little videos and things like that because that I think is more important about shifting out of that old patterning. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, the, the readings I'll often give people, I said, okay, let's, we're going to have to go backwards for, first before we can go forwards. So I'll write timelines. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the age of seven. Let's go back to the age of 11. Let's go 16, 21, mm. 28. And once you see a pattern, mm. right, you know, okay, it might be a different um, experience or challenge, but it's very similar as well. So when you see a pattern forming, you think, okay, well, now to me, it's about getting to a fork in the road. Yeah. And right, so that's where different. I bring people. Yeah. Okay, so they have a choice, mm -hmm. right? So you can either still stay because fear is still ruling or you can move forward, right? And that's how, you know, I feel as if I'm able to help people shift out of that old pattern and create a new one. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. So in learning those tools you were doing that while you were still working in the hospital system that was that yes. was just part of yeah so how did they help with the overwhelming number or quantity of, of spirits that you were seeing in your working day oh did wow that diminish? <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a big question i get that so what a i guess what am i asking did it diminish did it help to kind of go okay guys not right now or you know, I've heard some people say they kind of 
they, they usually use the elevator, but one day there were so many, they pulled the whole train in, told them all to get in the train and off the train went, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, they were pretty persistent. <laughs> oh, goodness. Where was your team? <laughs> I don't know. It was like um, maybe they couldn't get no hurt. <laughs> maybe, because uh, it was sort of funny. Because I kept on evolving, mm. so I went through massive, massive changes. So what would be one week, the next week something else came along, mm -hmm. right? So mm. it kept on evolving all the time, right? To the point that you always, I always felt on a shaky ground mm. right because I just get acclimatized I just sort of come a little bit to terms with it and then bang the rug got pulled out and something new cropped up right um like as in you know I would see you know I couldn't touch anyone for about six months because as soon as somebody touched me I saw their life picture mm. it was like a screen wow going right and so that became very um you know challenging to accept so i really held back and that was with family as well i wouldn't touch anyone right because i just would see and it would take me to all the all the pain mm -hmm. and i thought then you know then when it was in the like i suppose the healing side started i thought, I suppose looking in, in retrospect, the healing side was always part and parcel of it. But the healing start really, really started in the, you know, after 2000, mm -hmm. right? And that then started escalating as well. And so everything was always new. And I found it hard to come to terms with anything, right? Because it was always new and the people around me there was no one I could talk to about it because, you know, I did Reiki, I did, um, you know, and did my masters. I worked with Buddhist monks. Um, uh, they had a, uh, over in Ludnam, I think it is, um, near, um, near Ludnam, I think that they've got a, a place there. And so I went there for quite a time and spoke to the monks and they helped to, to, ease and mm. to calm things down and sort of explain mm. um but yeah it would just keep on changing all the time mm. and so i was always playing catch up with the coming to terms with it because something new would crop in so you know the healing started i did the reiki and like i said to master's degree um but then what i found the reiki, reiki what, what led you to Reiki if this wasn't something that was really easily accessible? Okay. Well, I suppose I, um, because with the healing that I was doing, I needed an umbrella mm. to fit it under, mm. right? Um, because my healing is different. Mm. It's more um, quantum and cellular and molecular. All right. And so... Um, I really needed that umbrella to sit it under so that I had some cover in it because it was just something that wasn't sort of talked about or wasn't open. Right. 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 So I did it to come to some understanding. It's also the Reiki was to understand a little bit about the energetic side of things. Right. Right. Okay. To me, you know, it's, you know, you had the symbology of Reiki, yeah. right? The symbols, but mine was more like on an energy, energetic level. How right? is that different? Um, what, what, um, what is the difference between your Reiki as a, an umbrella or, okay, or what you were saying, a cellular or molecular level? Okay, because I'm able to change um, dynamics in a person's body okay right so if somebody comes in with a swollen knee yeah i'll take away that swelling right if they're walking with a cane right you know they're walking side with a cane and they're walking outside without it 
Right. 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 So um, I had a client that I was working with and, um, and this was more of an experiment with me because it was, it, ha- it wasn't something that I had um, really delved into before. And so this was a couple of years ago and it was a young fellow that was, um, re- he ended up getting brain damage and it was through medical negligence. And because they, they took the tube out, he stopped breathing. He ended up not really breathing for 20 minutes mm-hmm. and then they intubated him in. So he had, he was pretty much brain dead. Mm-hmm. He couldn't talk. He couldn't walk. Um, the reason why he went in was he had um, a, uh, like lesions on his cancerous lesions on his throat. Mm-hmm. Right. And o- around his chin. So uh, this lady just, just asked me, Bernie, can you help at all? And I said, I have no idea. I said, but I'll try. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, the complaint that she had at the time was that he had elephant feet. Mm-hmm. They were just so, so, so swollen. Mm-hmm. And that first healing, and I did it by distance. So mm-hmm. um, I worked on his feet. And the next morning, I got a phone call saying, what the hell have you done? And I said, why, what's wrong? Panic stations already, right? Okay. Yeah, what a thing to say. What the hell have you done? And, uh, <laughs> and she said, it's, it's just amazing. His feet are normal. Oh, wow. We right? could have started then, with that. <laughs> you could have, but anyhow, yeah, she gave me a bit of a fright. And then, uh, yeah, more than a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and then we started working on other things. Right, we started working on his calf, and, and it was like I made a contract with this man. Mm-hmm. Right, he was just in his early thirties, mm. and I said, "I'll make a contract." I said, "If I fix your feet and your legs, then you need to walk." I mean, he was so he had a peg, so he couldn't even eat on his own or mm-hmm. anything else like that. Okay, so he had a um, yeah, he was peg fed, and So I started off with the legs. I said, this is simple. So he had very, very deformed knees and that was just through malnutrition, not um, no motor skills or anything else like that, lack of muscle. So I built up muscle. Mm -hmm. And so I've got like, I don't know, I don't know how many hundreds of photos. I said, okay, her job was, his his wife's um, job was to take photos. To document it, yeah. And send them to me so that I can see what I'm working on. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up um, working on his calves, built up the muscle. So after a month, I think it was, they started walking him. Mm -hmm. And this was a young man that was flat on the bed. Mm -hmm. Right. So he had, you know, very, very, um, there was no muscle, no nothing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I started building up bit by bit by bit. And then all of a sudden, within a short time, she said, all his, his chin, just under his chin and near his neck there, um, was so swollen. He had three massive marbles. Wow. That shape. And so I worked on that and I reduced it down to pea size. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then it was, he had a lesion on one of his lungs. So I worked on that. He ended up getting pneumonia um, because they, w- they refused to do any more tests on him. Right. They refused to do anything, right, right. because they said there's no point. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They basically said there's no point because, yeah, um, yeah he couldn't, uh, it wasn't going to get better, mm. right? So, and if he had to have a MRI or something, it had to be under general anaesthetic because of his behaviours, right? Because of the mental, like the the brain damage, right? right? And so brain injury. Okay. So anyhow, that went down. So he had a lesion. She showed me an old x-ray and she said, okay, he's got a lesion on his lung. And I said, okay. So I worked on that. He ended up getting pneumonia which then forced the doctors to make sure that he had the x-ray right 
the lesion was gone. Wow. Were they a bit surprised? They, yeah, <laughs> they were because they had two x-rays, lesion there, lesion not there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So continued to work. Anyhow, I, I said, okay, if I fix your neck and your, um, you have to start eating, mm -hmm. right? I said, but you're going to have to start off from baby food. Yeah. And so then he started eating, right? Then he started talking. Mm, wow. And he was able to say not big sentences, yeah. but he says, light off, right? light on, yeah. come here, water, mm. toilet. He was <laughs> able to say simple words and sometimes yeah. he was able to string a small sentence. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those things had all changed, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. um, his outlook on life as well, because mm -hmm. he was able to start communicating um, before he was on one of those big frames and people had to walk behind him. And in the end, he was walking around the facility. He had a walker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he was able to walk freely around the facility. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. So those were... Yeah, so I'll work on that. If you're to ask me how, mm. I have no idea. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's the truth of it. Yeah. To me, it's like a thought. If I see an image and I know what, I'm, what area I'm working on, in my mind's eye, it's like all these atoms and cells and molecules and they're all shifting and changing and that's the vision that I see. Wow. Yeah. Right. But to actually say how it happens or how it's possible, I have no idea to that. I have, Can't I don't have that. an answer yeah. for that. No. But no. I had to get to, and it was doing my head in, right? Because I was just continually trying to figure out an answer. Mm. Right. And in the end, you know, Bernie gets to, and he says, you know, I say, can I change it? No. Does it really matter if I know? Is it going to really make any difference? Yeah. You're still going to be doing it, right? Yeah. And I think, well, no. Then mm. why am I stressing about it? And why am I worrying about it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. My intention is to harm none. Mm. And so as long as I follow mm. that ruling, Mm. right then that's all I can expect but you know it's one of those things that I don't have a map or you know you know a goes with b and b goes with, you know c follows yeah. I yeah. don't like a treatment plan <laughs> yeah I don't have one yeah and I really don't know how it's possible like when I see his foot from you know his foot was like this mm. Mm. And overnight, she sends me a photo and it's a normal sized foot, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, I'm my own worst enemy because I look at it and I'm thinking, that's not possible. <laughs> that's not the same foot. <laughs> no, I said, you've, you've swapped patients or something like that, right? <laughs> that's it, you pulled a swifty on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, because the logical mind yeah. says it's not possible. Yeah. Because that's what we've been taught. There yeah. has to be a scientific proven system mm -hmm. in order to, you know, for something to, you know, to be believed. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and that was doing my head in because I was seeing the changes. And I'm thinking that it doesn't, this was getting in the way mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so Bernie, look, doesn't matter if you know how or why. If it's helping, mm. that's the main thing. So yeah. I had to get out of my own head space. Right. Mm. I had to get out of my own head space because otherwise I thought I was going to go back to that loony bin, right? <laughs> <laughs> back to the loony bin? Had you been there before? <laughs> well, I worked alongside them, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> You skipped that bit. <laughs> oh, 
Well, while I worked in emergency, uh, and even right. on the switchboard, I dealt with a lot of, lot of mental health. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I'm thinking, you know, mm. um, I have, you know, there's some friends of mine that will say, I don't get you, Bernie. I just don't get you. And I said, it's all right. Don't try. And it'll try, right? Um, <laughs> that's, but, yeah. that's my motto. Don't try and understand it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. it was, yeah, interesting. So, you know, things have sort of cropped up in my path, whereas I, I am able to expand, mm -hmm. right, and mm. go into different different modalities and different things. but. To tell you the truth, I really don't know how it's happening. Mm. So different modalities, they don't do they change the way you work or they just put a do they put a, a new kind of framework or filter on understanding how you work? Um, I suppose the like my guides or my team, they 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 give me a new um aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. Or a new strain of it. It's like, you know, um, you know how you can get the new, newest version of iPhone? Yes. Yeah, that's how I feel. Sometimes. Get an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get this upgrade and then um, I just have to deal with it. Sometimes I don't, and then, but I've learnt not to fret about it. Mm -hmm. I said, it is what it is. It's a ride. But you know what? You haven't given me, I look up to the heavens and I said, you haven't given me a form to show me how to put it together mm. so I'm not going to do anything <laughs> until you let me know <laughs> so I hold them to ransom a little bit right <laughs> <laughs> she's not that quiet naive 16 year old petrified that people are going to lock her up anymore <laughs> yeah no now I said well show me yeah show me or show teach me, me or or um you know you haven't given me, you haven't sent, you, you may have sent the box of goodies, but you, you have you <laughs> Where's the instruction manual? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I said, I ain't doing nothing. I don't know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. But usually somebody comes along that I end up doing a healing for and it's exactly what that's just been downloaded or upgraded or right. whatever. And so there's a tutorial. comes it back. Yeah, there sort of is. Sometimes I'll just think, oh, well, okay, I'm just going to try it. This is the right thing. It's the right thing, you know. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's a bit hard because there's no, um, um, that's why the Reiki sort of mm -hmm. helps to put it under that umbrella because otherwise it's it's not something that um, I've sort of come across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, something that it's like, you know, um, you just have to accept what's arrived and then you need to try and implement it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And so, yeah. But, yeah, they could give me a holiday if they like that. <laughs> holiday from learning new tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, like, you know, we started off with the struggles and things like that. But, you know, I found that all of those struggles, they often, you know, they bring us to who we are today. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, a stronger, wiser version. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, you know, that's always my hope that if, with the readings that I do and the healing something, if you could only realise that you're not that person. Mm. If you can only acknowledge how much you've grown, mm. right? You know, a while ago I shared a, um, and I really um denied about sharing it because it was very personal, and it was in my journal, my diary. It was something that I wrote quite a few years ago, and I wrote a letter to my younger self. And I said, guess what? I'm just here to let you know that you made it. You helped <laughs> me get, get to who I am today. Mm. All that struggle, all that pain, all that hurt, all that non-acceptance, um, it sort of faded. It didn't matter anymore. Mm. And it's always about being present. 
present in the here and now. That's mm. that's where your strength lies. Mm. That's where yeah. it will always be. You learn to dump the rubbish or the, the, the luggage on along the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a very good issue, visual. You know one of those... Um, like conveyor belts where they squash cars. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like in Toy that's Story. That's my baggage. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my, like big cars, you know, they squash it. They have the, yeah. those machineries and they squash it up in a little cube and then they are able to get rid of it. Yeah. Right? Well, that's, that's what I look at all my past. Mm. My past, the mm. hurts, the disappointments, the, you know, abandonment or whatever. Mm. I look at that and I imagine it's a car and it's getting squashed into this little cube and then I t toss it in the dumpster. Yeah. That's my visual mm. about getting rid of things. And it, it works for me. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. A good tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now your readings and healings and where does the treasures that inspire come into it? Uh, that is my Zen zone, mm. <laughs> right? This is where I escape from the chatter. Yeah. And this happened probably around about nine, nine and a half years ago. And I always loved crystals, always collected them, mm. right? Well, mm. as a child, I thought they were crystals, but you know, they could have been rocks and shells and, mm. and feathers and anything else like that. But yeah. As I got into my 20s, I really started being attracted to crystals. And then it was almost, like, you know, another little voice in my head. And it was more the crystal talking, mm -hmm. right? And it told me how it felt, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started um, working with crystals when I was already in my 40s. That's when I started making jewellery. And... To me, they're totems or amulets. Mm. Amulets are there to help you get through something. Yep. Totems are, you know, talismans are there to shine a light to help you travel through what you're going safely. Yeah, yeah. And they help to empower you, right? So that's something that I really, really enjoy doing. So, you know, I make this one. This one was my nemesis. It took me months and months and months and many bleeding fingers to do. <laughs> oh, no. It's out of. It did because it's Just out of. Just bring it a bit closer so I can see, please. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's like a mosaic. Yes. It's on a bed of tourmaline. Uh huh. Oh wow. Right? And so I had to cut all these little cubes, and I, I just they kept on breaking because there's mm. tiny slithers. Right. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, it was an, it was my nemesis, but um, I I was so close to throwing the whole lot in the bin multiple times. <laughs> right? Why didn't you? Because <clears throat> I had um, I had someone that believed, and he said, "No, you can do this," and kept on kept on encouraging me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And say, "Don't give up now. Mm. Don't. It's mm. going to be the one that you're going to look back on with regret." If you right. don't finish and it, so, yeah. If I don't finish it. And so I suppose I had to bleed, right, because <laughs> um, it is a talisman for, for me because the yeah. abalone represents um, it, it meant, represents letting things go and this is something that I've always had to do. Mm -hmm. Something comes in, it bugs me, let it go, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Um, you know, so I, my favourite place is the ocean. And so yeah. I'll go to the beach and I'll watch the waves come in and then I'll watch the waves go out, you know. So when the waves go out, it's I'm releasing. I'm yes. letting everything go. It yeah. doesn't hold, you know, it serves my highest good. And as the, the waves come in, it's renewing me with mm. something newer, bigger, better mm. to help me handle the situation. Mm. Right, so I absorb that energy. And so it's got the goddess and it's got peridot. And peridot oh, yeah. is all about well-being, right? Um, and that calms and centres me, right? And the, and the um, tourmaline, um, you know, that's 
sorry, obsidian. That's a, a, um, a, you know, a protective piece. So it helps to keep me in line, in tune. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Here here and in line. Yeah. Here and out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I love making the jewelry and each piece tells a story. Mm -hmm. Mm. Right. So I put a lot of intentions into every piece. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, I have, um, I have so much jewelry. It's not funny. I just I went through. We, we were talking about that a few weeks back. <laughs> yeah, I have so much. It's just not funny. And it was, but it was my saving grace. It yeah. helped me. Right. Yeah. When I was struggling about identity and, uh, you know, purpose and everything like that, that brought me back to center and I was able to focus and pour all my energy into that. Mm. So yeah. Mm. Right. So each piece has, you know, it's got a lot of intention, a lot of protection, right. And it's meant, you know, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, Mahabi would say to me, um, why are you making that one for? And I said, somebody needs it. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You know, and often when we're at a fair or something like that, he says, why are you pulling out another one? And I said, someone's coming. <laughs> it's like I'm already, I'm knowing. Yeah. And, often, and honestly, as somebody comes and they'll pick that very piece up, and that's what I'm looking for. And Your right, husband right. So, still asks you that? <laughs> <laughs> he still does. Because sometimes he says, why? Because he's looking at this, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a piece. But they're full, you know, everything's yeah. on the table. And I said, no, 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 I've got to get one out. Yeah. Right? Because the, <laughs> it, the one I need is not out already. No, nah, no, nah, because I always have spares underneath it. Because people will say, oh, yeah, I love them all, but no, nah, nah, none of them speaking to me. And I'll just go under the table and into my box and I'll just grab it. I said, is this the one you're looking for? <laughs> and that's exactly the one it is. So you could save yourself time and just have a few pieces on the table. I could. <laughs> and but just then, have the whole display just... underneath all catalogued and go, okay, so that's the one you're looking for. And they, all the names yes. would be this one, this one, that one, and mine. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. I could do that and save a lot of time. But then I'd stop everybody from playing with crystals. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so. The other thing I want to say is um, you're the reason people say to me, um, have you got anything else in the back room? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, everything I've got is out. Why would I put it in the back room? Now I know. <laughs> That's where I went wrong all this time. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But honestly, the number of people who say, oh, is that all you've got? Like in the sense of, oh, I'm, you haven't got any stashed away? No, I haven't got any stashed away. <laughs> yeah, I always do. I carry probably, apart from what's on the table, I probably carry another 150 to 200 pieces that are <laughs> underneath. And, um, right, um, and it's just, I'll just swap them around at times and I'll just, yeah, I'll be, oh, no, I've got to take that one with me or I've got to take that one with me. So I've always got spares. Oh, yeah. Gosh. That's not to mention all the ones that are still sitting at home, right? I know, yeah. right? I know. <laughs> too many, too many. Too many. My hubby threatens that he's going to make the best Pebble Creek driveway ever. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. It would sparkle, but what, my goodness, would, it, he might be under it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't blame him really because he bought more crystal. I said, yeah, I needed it. You haven't got enough. No. This one. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't have this one. That's right. That's right. No. I didn't have this this one. one. (laughs) But I now have this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You should see them. They're massive. They're huge. Like this one. This this was was done in collaboration with Andrew. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's the lady, isn't it? You you brought yeah, that in. A, right. You brought her in a few times when you did readings. Yeah, 
Yeah, she she um demands it. Yeah, won't, won't stay at home. <laughs> Oi, you've forgotten home. something. <laughs> I know, pretty much. He says you're taking. I went. Oh, well, she's coming with me, right? <laughs> Hang on, I have yeah. to go back and get Emily May. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know why she came back? Really? Yeah, she came <laughs> back. She went away when we like um. For a while and I went into this really big like I didn't communicate I didn't talk I didn't do anything and mm. then when I was about 15 she came back and so she still pops in every now and then right wow. so wow. especially when I work with kids right ah. so yeah yeah so when I work with kids she's always present right and um yeah so you know and the working with kids is mainly like I know how it is to struggle and to come to terms with um, abilities and sometimes mm. it frightens kids, mm. right? Mm. I used to have a stall at Edelong Markets and I was just sitting there and um, this little girl came running up mm. and just sat on my lap oh. and I'm thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> No I hands. don't know you. Right? <laughs> yeah, I saw two women running down the corridor, right? And then the mother stopped. The grandmother banged into the mum mm -hmm. and she came up and she said, what have you done to your daughter? I said, I didn't do anything. I said, she just climbed up on my lap. My daughter doesn't touch anyone. And I said, your daughter is an empath. Mm. Right? And she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, she's an em empath. When she, people touch her, she feels everybody's pain, right? Mm. And, um, you know, uh, she was only three and a half at the time mm. and I ended up working with her for a while until I was able to teach her how to put a protection and then she became a normal child and not being able to take on everybody else's energy. So, mm. yeah. Wow. Did it take a while? Did, did her mother understand what you were saying? Yes, yeah, she had a little bit of knowledge about it, but yeah. she didn't see, understand the extent of what her daughter was going through. Right. And so I explained. So I said, when, you know, when she touches you, she feels the pain when you lost a baby or she feels the pain when, you know, your heart was broken mm. by someone. She'll go automatically to that and it's too much. It's an overwhelm. So mm. if she's touching more than one person, she's just accumulating everybody's pain and feelings and at three and a half you really don't have an understanding of it but so you restrict yeah yeah right yeah. because it yeah. hurts too much yeah but you don't know how to explain it either because you've got no words for it that's right mm. you know so i worked with her for uh for a while and yeah she's thriving now so she's really really good yeah and awesome. um yeah each time i uh I haven't seen her that many times since, but um, I caught up with her last year and she came running over, gave me the biggest hug, Bernie! Right? <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's lovely, you know. So, yeah, it's helping people, you know, um, overcome the fear and the anxiety that sometimes some of these spiritual gifts bring because mm -hmm. when we don't have an understanding of it, that's the way we struggle and that's where we isolate ourselves because we, we label, like other people label us, but we also label ourselves. Yeah. And I suppose if you're in a situation or in a setting where this stuff doesn't get talked about, it's hard to know where to ask to find out more information or even the words to use to do a Google search. You know, everything's at our fingertips, yeah. but you haven't got the words for it. Or a label That's for right. it of some sort, which doesn't include crazy or nutter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's very true. Like, because, you know, growing up. Go on. Yeah, growing up, I found it very hard because there was nothing. There wasn't mm. even Google. No, no, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, right. too, even, even, you know, you do sometimes do a preliminary search on, on Google or whoever. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if you don't put in sensitive words, you get all sorts of weirdo stuff. And then sometimes that can make That's it right. worse. You know, you're like, you're Googling your medical condition or 
met your, your, uh, your symptom and uh, you've got cancer and you're dying tomorrow, you know, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's right. no more helpful exactly. than thinking, oh God, things are falling off and I don't know what to do about them. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. But you're more, you're, you're settled with it. You're happy. You're, um, um, at peace with it. I am and I've taken ownership. Right. Whereas it's, before yeah. I was always trying to um, repel mm. because it was way too overwhelming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, and sort of going to churches and things like that and asking for exorcisms and all the rest, that was you know, me at my wit's end mm. because I really, I, I did, I was absolutely petrified that they were going to take my kids mm. away from me and that they were going to lock me up. Mm. That was an absolute 100% fear. Well, that's a reality for women who do have these gifts and in areas where yeah. people don't understand them. That is a reality. So that's a real fear. That is. Yeah. It is. Mm. You know, and it was really scary and, and not having anyone to talk to, mm. not having anyone around that could understand. Could so it. you just, yeah, that's right. That's true. That's yeah. very, very true. Yeah. Right. People weren't willing to put their hands up and admit to it. So mm. you just bottled and bottled and bottled and bottled. Mm. Right. Mm. And then you had to um, try and come find your own way to come to terms with it. Mm, mm. and that was another struggle mm. and then it was you know there was self-doubt there was self-criticism there was self-judgment you know you know I thought I was nuts mm, mm. but and you're then not when nuts you someone... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not no no no, <laughs> no I've managed to live to 2020 so I've, I finally found that you know, community where it's okay. Yeah. To blurt things okay out. To, yeah, to get Bernie's version of verbal diarrhea. Right? <laughs> That's it. And now people pay you for their your verbal diarrhea. <laughs> they they so, ring you up and they say, What have you got for me? And they turn up and listen. <laughs> so that's you know, great. Yeah. <laughs> It's really funny how, you know, even the readings have sort of changed because um, before I'd say, oh, what sort of a reading and they'd give me direction of, of what kind of a reading they wanted. Anyhow, and it's now like, so what sort of a reading do you want? Bernie's verbal diarrhea, right? It's hey, on I'll the I'll menu. Tell me that. It's on the menu. I'll say Bernie's diarrhea. And I said, you sure? Because <laughs> I'm opening said, the gates now. I said, you know what you're asking for? <laughs> You so if you ask them three idea. times, that's three gates you've just opened, right? And then it's all, yeah, it's all through after that. And the cows all come running old, through. Sugar. Oh, sugar. <laughs> right. It's really, oh. but it's hilarious. You know, yeah. you come to, you know, you always have your doubters and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, I, I was, you know, how you had the, the, the breathalyzers there, the police are out doing breathalyzing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Anyhow, I got pulled out one day and I had a, I had a, um, one of those magnets on the side of the car and I got pulled over and for a breathalyzer and they took one look at the sign and said, oh, you know, my wife believes in that, but I don't. Right. I reckon that's a bit of bullshit, you know. Anyhow, I went, okay, that's all right. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Right. And yeah, but they kept Even going. Even when it's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, okay, even when it's wrong. But he kept on going. Yeah. And I just went, he said, oh, so what sort of readings do you do? And I said, well, you know, I'll just sit down and chat. And he went, he's rolling his eyes and that sort of thing. And I'm thinking, okay, mm -hmm. all right. So he just turned around and he says, yeah, I think that is a lot of hogwash. And I said, well, officer, I just wanted, to, I want to say congratulations to you. And he says, congratulations? What do you mean, congratulations? I said, your wife's having twins. Who the F are you? <laughs> Writing down the officer's <laughs> name and number. <laughs> yeah. Who 
was so it was hilarious right it was yep. so hilarious and then he said how do you know that and I said your dad's telling me <laughs> and he said but my dad is I said I know he's passed away he passed in 1973 said, actually, <laughs> 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 pretty much and he, and he turned around he said oh this is this is crap and he's looking around he says do you mean he's here <laughs> right and so it's quite hilarious I I, I actually get quite good entertainment when I sort of shock people <laughs> and a little bit of Bernie's diary comes out right yep. so his wife did have twins right yep she did have twins and um yeah he says oh I end up doing a reading for the wife so <laughs> but every single time he sees me he'll just say oh no you oh, <laughs> right <laughs> drive on madam drive on <laughs> he does but the funniest thing was I got pulled over. There was about three police officers all having a conversation. Then they waved me on. And the next day I got pulled over again in the same spot. And I said, you know what? I said, you're not a very good police officer. And he says, what do you mean? I said, you didn't even breathalyze me. They forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's that woman who tells you stuff about yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> They actually forgot to breathalyze me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a hint, guys. No! <laughs> you get out of being breathalyzed. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Gosh. But again, yeah, so yeah, there have been some funny times. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's good. That's good because you need some funny times too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can look back on it now and say, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Fine. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So if you, if you sum up, Bernie, how would you say, how would you introduce yourself now? Okay. Um, I suppose, you know, we were playing, I was playing around with Andrew with words and that sort of thing. He says, Bernie, you know, you're a seer, you're a, uh, you're a transformationalist and, you know, mm. you're, you're able to, do mediumship and that and I think I did a new um and I think I'll keep it as a logo and I said it's Bernadette Popich the finder of missing pieces oh nice oh I just because got I shivers all up all, my back for that that's awesome because oh. we all have missing pieces that lay embedded in mm. our past mm. and that we've mm. forgotten about that we've lost, that we're buried, that we've buried because we're too scared to show up a hundred percent anymore. Mm. Mm. Right? Nice. So we minimize ourselves with every hurt mm. we go down, right? So that we're not showing up as our authentic selves. So I guess my job is I go find those missing pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And I bring them back. Awesome. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> well, let's let's finish it there. And um I reckon we've got another chapter for a future chat. What do you reckon? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not indeed? I've broken the eyes now and thank you for <laughs> inviting me and thank you for allowing me to tell a bit of my story. You're welcome. I thank really you for appreciate sharing. it. Yeah, you're welcome. No worries. Thank you. No worries. Bernadette Popich, the finder of missing pieces. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> All I right. like the sound of it. All right. Thank you. From my heart to yours. I got that from you. My heart to yours. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my standard saying. I know. I know. I pinched it. All right. You do it. You do it. I, and I'll, I'll respond. <laughs> okay. To everybody that's listening and yep. to Joe in particular, it's been from my heart to yours. Received with love. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>